Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech, I'm Josh. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to install the EDF power system into your retro rocket. Now the cool thing about the retro rocket is it can be either a prop driven, slow, cartoony, fun experience, or it can be a fast and sleek EDF jet. This plane is so stable and so much fun to fly, this could even be your very first EDF jet, especially when you couple it with the FU-R5. You're not gonna need a lot of materials for this build. All you're gonna need is your hot glue gun, some tape, a razor blade, and of course, your finished and completed fuselage and wing. Don't forget your EDF power add-on that's all available in the store as well. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. Adding this power system is incredibly easy and rewarding to do. All we need is a hot glue gun, screwdriver to remove our wing, a knife, some tape, and the two formers that we have. This is our main form that's gonna hold the bottom of our EDF, and this is our rear thrust tube. The final piece that we're gonna need is gonna be our thrust tube, and that's this poster board piece that you see right here. Let's go ahead and first start by conditioning our motor, getting our thrust tube built, put it on the motor, and from that point on, we can work on fitting it inside of our retro rocket. Now for our thrust tube, you're gonna notice that there's an etch line that's etched right along the one side. This is gonna be the distance that we're gonna overlap our paper, and it's gonna give us the perfect diameter not only to fit over our motor, but also to give us the proper exit or exhaust hole on the back to give us the most power and efficiency. Make sure that you don't close this hole off too much and that you follow along with the etch line because if you close the hole too much, it can cause the motor to work too hard and overheat. There's a couple different ways that we can do this. The easiest way for me is just simply a piece of tape. I'm gonna go ahead and place a piece of tape on the far side here, just like you see here. And now we can go ahead and roll this around I'm gonna line up one edge first, usually the very tip. I'm gonna tack that down. And now I can line up the rest and press it into place. Once our exhaust tube is taped up, trim off any excess that you may have. Now that we have our exhaust tube made, let's go ahead and do a quick test fit to make sure that this fits over top of it. Now this isn't gonna fit just on the edge, this is gonna sit down about a quarter of an inch. The most important thing that we wanna make sure is that we don't have this angled one direction or the other, but it's sitting vertically. Easiest way to make sure that it's sitting vertically is that this cone on the very edge should be the equal distance from this rib to the paper all the way around. It's also easy just to simply hold it in place and kind of move it so it's even on all directions. Once we're happy with the way it fits, I'm gonna take two pieces of tape, one to go around the top half, and one to go around the bottom half. So we're gonna tape it right down, press it into place, and push it all around. Make sure that your tape completely seals around the whole exhaust tube, which means you may have to kind of notch around the tape. You don't want any back pressure blowing forward through the exhaust tube. Right. At this point, we're now ready to install the motor inside of our retro rocket. Now, ultimately, I'm gonna be installing this EDF inside of our Thunderbird, but there's one important cut that I wanna show you on this one that we need to make. You're gonna notice that there's two etch lines, one here and one here, followed by a score line in the rear. This is gonna basically make a little door that we can kind of open up that's gonna help guide the air through the whole entire EDF fan. To move this door down, all we simply need to do is take our razor blade, cut down through the edge lines on both sides, and push the door down. <laughs> now that we have this door cut loose, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this door, just pull this open kind of like a big old trap door, and you're gonna see behind it is an open channel that's gonna go all the way to the front nose. We're gonna use this open channel to pass down our ESC at this moment. All we need to do is let gravity be our friend. We're gonna go ahead and pass it down through the first hole, and you'll see a second set of holes that are right next to the battery hatch. That second set of holes is actually gonna be for our ESC wire. Pull off my uh, battery hatch. And if you can see, as we let gravity do its job here, our XT90 connector is gonna roll right out the very front. The last thing we wanna do here is we wanna snag our ESC wire here, and we can kinda just fish the ESC back and forth. Almost got it. 
there we go. And we wanna bring that out the side. Now this is a very important step to bring this out the side hole here because we don't want our ESC wires accidentally getting sucked back into the EDF. Now that we have that, we can make sure that we have our XT90 up in the front. And our last step is to guide our three wires through the side holes, giving us access to the back. There's one. And there we go. Okay. Now that we have everything routed, we have our XT90 in the front. We have our ESC wire coming out of one side or the other. And then again, we have our ESC leads going to our motor coming out of the left or the right hole. We can now put a drop of glue on the very top and glue this flap down. Once we've made our connections to our motors, we can easily just back feed these wires right back into the top cavity and it's gonna stay far away from our EDF motor. And speaking of EDF motor, now's a great time to do our first test fits to make sure everything fits in properly. Now it's important with our EDF motor that we make sure that these leads are accessible so we can route them up to the wires on the other side. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the EDF leads are facing downwards and we're gonna move this all the way in and poke this down against the rear former. Now it's very important that we seat this as far down as possible all the way up against our former. I'm gonna rotate just a little bit to the side here with our motor, just so our leads can easily make their connection without sticking below and making contact with the wing. Next, we're gonna take this former that we made earlier and we're gonna fit this over top. It's important that we make sure that this bottom former does not go below the portion of where the wing is gonna seat in or it's gonna push the wing away. This doesn't have to necessarily line up directly over top of the other former. We really just want this to seat down as far, as far as possible. And even if you have to shift it back a little bit, that's okay. The main strength is gonna come from the sides and also it being glued around the EDF motor itself. Once we're happy with where everything lies, we can lift this up, we'll slide it out we're gonna put a nice healthy bead of glue right on our former. And we're gonna slide it back in. Notice that we're only doing one side so far. We're not doing both sides. And we're making sure again that this slides down just as far as we had it before. I'm also just kind of favoring my leads just a little bit to the right, just like that. We're gonna let this fully dry and then we're gonna glue our top former in. Again, we're just gonna do a quick test fit of our top former. We're gonna make sure that all parts of it are underneath the wing saddle and this will finally give us the ability to pull our fuselage in the rest of the way. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a line of glue on both sides on the bottom of the former and around our EDF. I'm gonna be pretty generous with this amount of glue and we're gonna to have to hold this for a good amount of time, but keep in mind, this is what keeps our motor in. This is one time where more glue does not mean more strength. It's possibly a little bit off. All right, now you can see that we're underneath. There we go. And I'm just gonna press this in and hold until it's fully dry. If you want, you can even put a piece of tape over these two pieces and hold it under pressure. We're gonna let this dry and then we can make our connections. I'm gonna follow up with a bead of glue on both sides here. Just a little added reinforcement. And after about a minute and a half, we're gonna be ready for our next step. Okay, ready? <laughs> Now that our EDF is glued in place, we're gonna go ahead and make the connections for our ESC wires. Once we've made those connections, we do wanna confirm that the motor is actually blowing out the exhaust instead of sucking in. That's simply gonna be done through either our servo centering tool, or we can go ahead and bring our wing into place and we can cycle the throttle. Now, a lot of times, some of our motors here, if you match up the colors, you'll be okay. But this motor, because I've used it before, is actually the opposite turning motor. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug my three wires in randomly. Sometimes when the colors line up, they do work perfectly. Other times it's reversed. Never take that for granted. If for any reason your EDF motor is running backwards, all you simply need to do is swap any two of the three leads. Once we're happy with how everything is routed, our next step here is we're gonna just take our knife and we're gonna cut a small slit right in our doubler, about a half of an inch down.
That way we can go ahead and take one wire at a time and we can pass it on through. I'm just gonna open that up a little bit more. There we go. Once we cut our half inch slit, you can take something like a barbecue skewer or a thin, uh, thin blade and you can open this up. We're gonna pass each one of our leads right down through. And this way we can make sure that we don't have anything that's gonna come in contact with our EDF. If you're happy with the way everything fits, just simply put a drop of glue. You can always break that loose later if you have to service anything. And at this point, we're now ready to fit our wing back onto the fuselage. Now the only preparation that we needed to do with the wing here is you can see I took the 20 centimeter extension that was included with our power add-on kit. I plugged that into our ESC port, whether that's through the Aura 5 or our receiver. And I also made sure that I taped down both my ESC lead and also the antenna for my little satellite receiver. This is actually our little tiny ELRS satellite receiver that goes with our pocket. And this lead is the only lead I need to worry about making connection with the fuselage. Easiest way to make connection, so I'm just gonna turn this on its side. I'm gonna make sure that my signal wires and my ground wires line up with each other. And I'm gonna press it in place. Now, if you tape this down, just like you see here, the nice thing is, is nothing can again blow back in and cause your EDF to come in contact with any wiring. I'm simply going to raise this up, drop it right on down, and screw my wing into place. I'm just going to go ahead and snap in my landing gear real quick. And my nose hatch already has my optional landing gear on it. At this point, we can go ahead and do the test run of our EDF motor. Now for our center of gravity, the battery position is gonna depict where our center of gravity is. Now for our prop driven version, that only powers off of one 2200 milliamp three cell, that battery is gonna actually mount up in the front on the top of the nose. But for this application, we're gonna be using two 2200s that are gonna be series together through a connector. For that reason, I'm simply gonna go ahead and place a piece of Velcro on both my batteries and Velcro them together as one. There we go. Now these batteries are velcroed together. These will easily slide up and sit right on the shelf of our top battery tray, just like you see here. To hold these batteries down, you don't need to put a lot of Velcro on the very top. Oftentimes, I'll just put one single strip here because we don't need to fight against gravity. We really just need to keep it from sliding forwards and backwards. We don't want to put so much Velcro on that anytime we pull this off, we dent and damage the fuselage. Just make sure it's securely fastened. I'll put it right in the middle. There we go. And finally, just take it a piece of Velcro. I'm gonna go up inside my fuselage and I'm just gonna put a piece right here on the very edge and set it down in place. Now when I push this up and in, I can easily slide the battery to I want, press it down through gravity, but I can easily still lift it up and break it free. Before we power this on, we're gonna go ahead and check our center of gravity. And you're gonna notice that there's two holes right next to the seam about 10 and a quarter inches from the trailing edge. All we simply need to do is hold this upside down, put our fingers on the mark, right about there. And she balances out great. For your first flights, I'd strongly recommend that you make sure that you're just a touch nose heavy. In other words, that the nose is slightly pointed downwards. You don't want this absolutely level or, God forbid, tail heavy, or the airplane's not going to fly well or fly at all. Switch warning. There we go. In the previous video, we already went ahead and downloaded all the tunes for our Aura. Everything's working the proper direction. The only thing we need to test is our motor. I'm just going to simply sit this upside down on my lap here. I'm going to make the two connections through our series connector. Now, if you don't have a series connector like this, don't worry, because on our store, we're going to have these series connectors available that go from XT60 to XT90. That means you can fly the Retro Rocket or even one of John Overstreet's amazing airplanes where you can take two three cells and make it a six cell. Just make sure your batteries have a high enough C rating to be able to handle the amp draw. All right, our main lead's done. You can see we have plenty of access here in our ESC. We're going to connect it. We're going to let it make joint. Six beeps is a good sign. I'm just gonna simply put our hatch on. And from this point, 
we can go ahead and test our ESC. That's awesome. <laughs> that never gets old. Going from the prop-driven version to the EDF version definitely adds a whole different personality to the Retro Rocket. Now the really cool thing is, is if you want to be able to go through these two different personalities, all you simply need to do is build a separate fuselage and you can go from one wing into two different platforms. And our last step before we take this out to fly is to check all of our controls and then make sure we have the proper amount of reflex in the back. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push my stick to the right. I should see both my elevons on the right go up. When I push it to the left, same thing. Both my elevons on the left go up. When I pull the stick down, we should see both elevons raise up. And when I push it forward, we should see both elevons lower down. Now, if you have any of those special tunes like the air brakes, now would be a really cool time to test it out. I'm gonna hit my momentary. We got our air brakes. All right, we are all set. Our center of gravity is established. Our controls are working. We are ready to take this out for its very first flight. Thanks for being part of the Flightless family, and we'll see you next time.